Hey everyone, uh, as you know, GPTs have been released by OpenAI, which allows anyone to build a chat GPT-like interface with a specific personality and its own knowledge base. Uh, I've seen a lot of creators create content on how to do that, uh, but I don't see a lot of people talking about how to actually allow it to take action and call APIs and things like that. Um, and I think that's one of the most powerful things that GPTs can do for us. Um, so, and, and the documentation on, on OpenAI's website is pretty spotty. So I thought I'd make a quick video to share what I've learned uh, about how to create these things. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll go on and create awesome stuff together. Um, so the first thing you need is ChatGPT+. Plus. If you don't have it, you won't be able to create a GPT. And once you have that, you can just come to this Explore tab and you can go to Create GPT. And um, there's this conversational interface that allows you to create this and give it a personality and things like that. But we're just going to skip right that and jump straight into the actions bit. And the API we're going to work with is the Pet Store API, which is a public API commonly used to demonstrate uh, the open API spec or the Swagger uh, spec. Um, and we're going to dig into that. So we're going to say uh, Pet Store. For the description, we can say fetches pets from public Pet Store API. And we're just going to give it some brief instructions, uh, like you're an AI assistant that interfaces with an API, nothing fancy. Um, so from here, we actually don't need any of these capabilities because we're going to jump straight into actions. Now, actions are essentially a way to tell the GPT what APIs it can call. And the way you describe those APIs is through the open API uh, spec. So when it says enter your open API schema here, this is not open AI, the company, it's open API, the standard. And actually by default, they do have uh, a pet store YAML, which is the version one of the pet store. So I think if we go to this URL, yeah, it act, it's, it's, it's actually up, uh, but we can see that there, it's actually V2 here. So the V1 must be deprecated. Um, and actually, when I Googled it, there's actually a V3. So that's what I ended up finding and using. So when you open open this up, uh, you can see it has a whole bunch of endpoints that you can call. And it's all defined by this URL, which when you open it, is just a huge JSON blob that describes the various endpoints, such as, uh, you know, slash pet, um, and content types that it accepts, uh, the response, shape, and things like that. And even security, like, uh, you know, what's supported. There's OAuth uh, supported as well as an API key. And of course, a lot of the endpoints don't even have a security scheme. But this JSON is too big. Offline, I, I went and narrow it, narrowed it down to just two endpoints. Uh, so we could just simply use that. And I'm just going to pop that in here. And you can see the, well, the one I'm interested in is find pets by status. There's already a bunch of pets uploaded. So here you can see you, you can pass it, uh, the status of available, pending or sold, but we're not going to tell chat GPT to specifically do that and pass those query parameters just by having the summary and its reasoning engine, basically of, of the large language model, it's able to do that for us. So we can even say, uh, you know, uh, uh, fetch available pets and, uh, and list their names. And just through that, it's gonna parse this schema and try to figure out which endpoint to call. Um, and we can see that it's trying to call, yep, the find by status endpoint, and it's uh, passing the status available as a parameter. And there's this really interesting is consequential flag that got added here. And all this means is that if it's not consequential, then it shows this always allow button here. So you can verify that this is an action you want to take. If it is consequential, like you're trying to create something or take some important action in the world, 
that flag will be set to true. And that's actually something that you can specify uh, in the spec itself with a with a little extension, which I'll uh, I'll try to demonstrate this for you. So we're going to say allow, and it's calling the endpoint, and it received a response, which looks like this. So you got the ID, category, photo URLs, and which are, these are like fake URLs because people have been playing with this tag and status, right? So now it took that. That's just a debug response. So now it took that and actually is listing all the names as they're listed in the response. Now let's try to create a pet, right? So we have this post pet uh, call that creates a pet. So create a pet um, and include any required fields as you see fit. So the, the API actually doesn't allow you to create pets uh, just like this, but notice that it doesn't say always allow here because by default, anything other than a get request is automatically consequential. So you have to verify every single time. So we'll do that, it'll call it. Of course, it's not gonna allow us and it'll just say, sorry, I attempted to do this, but I'm not allowed. Um, and and that's, that's sort of it. Like that's how you can allow it to talk to uh, external APIs. There's some other bits here like uh, authentication, which you can come edit here. Let's say your API took some key, you could uh, you know, pop it in here and you can tell it as you're making that request, uh, put it in a, in a bearer token, uh, as in add the authorization bearer token header to the HTTP call or even add a custom uh, header. Uh, and it even supports OAuth for more advanced use cases. So if I want to make the find by status consequential. If I want control over, you know, that allow action, I can come here and I can just add this OpenAI extension, which sets the is consequential to true. Now let's give that a try. Let's say, tell me the number of available pets and let it call the API, you see that it wants to call that status and is consequential is true this time. So always allow is not there. And um, that is the basics of how you can call actions from your GPT. Um, in a future video, I will be going over how you can integrate this with Zapier, which expands the number of use cases that you can use GPTs for by allowing you to plug into hundreds of different applications in the same action spec. Uh, now, stay tuned for that video. Thanks so much.